coming up. Seven tractors, two balers, three telehandlers, 50 acres, and a lot of hay. Oh yeah, and some flight in it. Hmm, look who's just been in to tip some green waste off. Only the suspected fly tipper from the other day. So we've just showed him some pictures and asked him, does he know anything about it? Well, apparently um, he's going to speak to his boss and see what's going on. Sam's just unloading the low loader so we can use it to take the digger to the field where we're going to sort the gateway out ready for fencing. Fast track's loaded up now with a load of wood chips to go. But it's parked up for an hour. We need the tractor because my nephew needed to lift to school so my dad's taking him and we've got to wait for him to get back to then take the chip. No one else is allowed to lift a wood chip because it's my dad's favourite job. Time is it now? Hurry up! Hi! It's off the loaded chip now, hopefully we'll be back in an hour and a half. Have the tractor back for other work. James is off to Cuddington with some wood chip and a mini digger. Sort out a wet gateway, the grass field up there. Probably have to take some stone up as well. So I know I think it was a little boy who lives across the road who um, missed us last time we were up there. Anyway, I don't know if he's in school, but if he comes back later, he might see some work that James has done. Someone told me about this yesterday. It's a CB app. So say something, Sam, on that. Press the button. Yeah, I can hear it. So did you hear that come through my camera? Because that's now a CB, so we've all got the app now, so we can all talk to each other. Just quickly called in the village hall. Tony, while I've been away at Cereals, has done the AstroTurf. It's like a bowling green now. Just going to measure up now to get this doorway put in there, so that obviously we've got like a vista, a lot more usable space. Put a bit of topsoil in there, so that with grass as well. But it's definitely coming together. I'm spraying now the barley. Don't normally like doing it, but if you can see, it's got all this volunteer wheat in it, so it kind of looks a bit green and the barley's underneath. So I'm having to come through the glyphosate, kill the wheat, and it'll obviously speed up the dyeing process and the ripening process. And then in 14 days, hopefully, we can get cutting barley. So I've done a little bit while I've been away. Do this now, and like I say, we can get in it with the combine, get the barley off, and then try and get it drilled with oilseed rape. But it looks, even on the camera, it looks, a lot more wheat than there actually is, but there is, you know, five or ten percent wheat in the field of barley. But it's only feed barley anyway, so it doesn't matter. Glyphosate can often be called sunshine in a can because it's basically giving the plant a fake summer and going to make it ripen. So, in the northwest or further north, they often have to use it quite a lot to get the wheat to ripen so they can get it off before the bad weather of the winter sets in. It's um, it's, it's obviously got a cost to it. That's the reason why we, we don't like to do it, really. But if I waited for the wheat to go green and ripe enough to go through the combine, the barley would have fell on the floor and shed and deteriorated and be worth nothing. So basically got to even the ripening up of the two sort of crops. So you could call it by cropping, but really it's just a mistake. It's just wheat that we drilled the other year that was too wet, just didn't germinate, and for some reason now it has. This woman's keen here, chasing that man. to cut that headland, get it out of the way because it's proper messy. Andy's very proud because he's just built this engine back up ready to go in that van. It broke down on someone last weekend, it's had a full engine rebuild. It's got a nice shiny turbo on it, nice shiny block, new starter, new clutch, new head is it? Seems to spend most of my life fixing biomass boilers. This one, the one that does the hot water at the other farm and the igniter's gone. It's not that old, so I'm taking the spur igniter off and putting that in there, but it's right inside there and it's an absolute pain to get out. This is the field that we're baling hay in. So we've got some fly tip in there the other day. And then while the lads have been working behind them trees, someone's come in and tipped that. So they saw it and tried to chase them, but they'd got away. So it's a, red, a white Renault panel van. 
Believe it or not, Andrew managed to drive past that fly tip and not spot it on his way into the field. Here's her, pumping out a little bale. B A4, can't go any faster. So heavy a crop. Zoom out and David's strapping the load up for Andrew to take back because he's just finished rowing up. John Deere's everywhere today. Flat out on the fast track, riding shotgun. It's simple. <laughs> um, yeah, so how did you not see that fly tipping before, Andrew? Missed it between loads. Yeah, but how did you not see it when you drove in the field? It's always in the eyes. It's a fair lot there, isn't it? The route for it for some evidence in a bit. John's double wrapping, but he's getting behind. The trailer's not empty yet. We're back with another full one. Bail wrappers are running off two diesel engines, so they haven't even tracked on the front. That one's just finished. That will tip now, and then it'll put the wrap all on the floor. There you go. That one's still spinning around. It's a bit like cling film, but John's got another one now. You lift that on that wrapper, and remotely turn that one on again. And that, that'll start again, and then the one is wrapped. Move. And then this one's barely finished. That one's just starting off. So if little yellow rollers turn the bale and then the other thing folds the wrap onto it, this one's just finished. So a nice go, chops it now, puts the wrap, bale tips back a bit further, falls on the floor. You get another bail, put that on. And that'll start wrapping. The other one's getting near the end now. It's like a football commentator, really. They're going around that flat. That one's off. That one's getting near finished. That one's just starting. In a second. That should be done. It'll put like maybe three or four layers on. Right, it's ending now, so it'll lift up. And then a little knife in there flies across. Once it's half fit. So it's going up now. Nice. Flicks it up. Flicks it the rest of the way. Get ready with the next one now. Put the bail on. Proper efficient. You tell John's done that before, can't you? That goes. The trailer's now empty, so Andrew can hitch up for that and pull the other one forward. This will start now. The trailer's working away now. I'm in the field now to try and stack some more hay so that we can drive the gun so that we can get cleared up and there's a massive black cloud and you can't see because I was on the road but I've got like a few spots on the window. Anyway, it's that hot and dried off now but it does look like that cloud could burst on us. Looks to be some baler problems. There's a few flakes and a broken bale. The bale has stopped. I better go and see what's wrong. Oh, it's stuck on a bit there. Yeah. Plan B, cable tie. <laughs> Little tiny spring had snapped that was in control in the baler, the bail length. So we tried to fix it with a key ring off the baler, but it sort of stretched it out. Anyway, we found a meaty cable tie and we've used that. So hopefully that'll hold out, but if not, Andrew's on his way back an empty trailer and he's going to bring some pliers and some fencing wire and we can try and fix it with that. There's a horse flying in the cab. There's loads of mount today. When we load straw and hay we take it on and off with spikes and we put them really tight so they don't move but because John's going to unload at the other end we squeeze it. I've rammed it up a bit too tight so David told me to put a gap in so we don't so John doesn't get moody when he gets to the other end to take them off with his squeeze. 
See, when David's been doing it in the past, I was just thought David was rubbish at stacking straw with the front loader. Baylor seems to be acting up again, and it's typical because today's the last dry day before it rains all next week and the thunderstorms tomorrow. So hopefully it'll just stop messing around and get bailing, and then the other baler of ours is going to bigger bales. Hopefully it's working okay because there's about 25 acres for that to mop up as well. Got a little mini bale and then another little mini bale. Hopefully it should work now. We've had to adjust the sensor. A little pin had come out, snapped the spring, put the pin back in. And then it wasn't quite working properly because it was wobbling. Anyway, we've got it back in, adjusted the sensor and then tried to tighten it up. Hopefully that'll work now. We got we got the baler going, but we've got a toolbox now in case it breaks again, and it's out of the new combine of David's, and it's got all John Deere tools in it. More than you get with a class. Look at that. That is good, that though, isn't it? That is a touch of class. Yeah, and a charger for it with USB for the rail. Free with the combine. Yeah, free. That's most of this field clear, just a little bit over there. Um, off to the other block now when the bigger bale is working. That's the advantage of the fast track, how fast you can go across a field. It's like a slalom going down this road. Just through. Start again now. Sam there, Put his beacons on, just so people, in case a car comes up behind him. Adam's still rowing up over there. He says as he bounces. Adam's rowing up over there. Five minutes later, uh, needle come off, threaded on the baler. Anyway, Sam sorted it. Well, I jumped to the knee, tied it off. Sam's off again now. Hopefully, the sky has got very, very dark. But we've only got a few little rows left to do and then get the rest in. Looks looks well that trailer on its first outing on the hay. I've got rain on the window. I don't think you can see. It's a bit hard to see against the backdrop of the trees. If I turn the wiper on, I'll end up with a smeared mess. And we've got only a few rows left to do. So keep going, Sam. And Adam. Adam's like. Well, Sam's chasing Adam with a baler and he's trying to row up. So you can't see Sammy's Adam. He's, there you go. There's Adam there. It's rowing up. So they've only got a little bit left to do. Hopefully we're going to get it done before it, the heavens open. Because it's a bit dark, that cloud. It's now officially raining and the baler is just making its way to the gateway and the rake because we've finished. We've just got to get the shed, hay in the shed now. A few more left. You're all probably going to bed. We're going to carry on getting this hay in. Thanks to everyone that, that replied yesterday why they like watching it. It was, you know, really nice to hear the different things. And it's just the general, seems to be the general day-to-day -day content that makes it interesting. Not just all the tractors and different things that, that you get to see what you're using. So that was really good to hear all that. You know, even when we've got breakdowns, you can even find that interesting as well. A bit like today, trying to fix the baler with a key ring. Anyway, we ended up finding a big cable tie and use that instead. Today's quiz question is dead, dead easy. Is who actually watches it every day? Or who just sort of like waits a few days and then watches it, you know, a couple at a time? Anyway, let me know. Like I say, I'm just trying to find out what makes the channel tick, if you will. That's about all for today. Just a few more bales left to get in. Got out to smell the rain. Uh, if you want to watch another video, click here. If you want to subscribe, click over there. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all tomorrow.